Yo, what is up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and do a complete cool and flush on the Infinity M45. Uh, the car, I think, has been sitting for a long time and the coolant reservoir looks like it has a lot more water than it does coolant. So I wanna go ahead and completely flush that out. Um, if you guys don't know, water can cause buildup in the engine or the engine components when it comes to the cooling system. So flushing that out, getting all that gunk out of there should really help out, making sure that the uh, cooling system is good, it's running properly, there's no issues with it, and no pieces in there, especially because we just did a video on replacing the thermostat housing and it completely broke into little pieces. I do want to make sure that nothing went into the cooling system that could cause problems or damage anything in there. So if you guys haven't watched that, make sure to check out that video before actually watching this one because of course that should be like replaced and done with before doing a flush on the car. But I watched a lot of videos on how to do this and I'm pretty confident in doing it. But I'm not a professional by any means, so if you guys want to try this, try it at your own risk. I'm just learning a lot about this platform, the VK45DE. Don't know too much about it, but I'm learning as I'm pretty much going with this car, getting to learn a lot of the parts, what needs to be done, things like that. So I can't wait for me to get closer to a point where I'm a lot more comfortable with this car and start doing a lot more um, aesthetically pleasing things once we get done with all the mechanical stuff on this car. The way I'm going to be flushing the fluid does take a little bit longer. It's a lot more time consuming because you have to allow the car to sit there, uh, fill it up, drain it out, sit there again, drain it out, run the car, things like that. So it does take a little bit longer. There's an easier way of buying a special tool which you can actually suck out all of the coolant with like a compressor, putting it in a bucket, then filling it up with new coolant, sucking it in through there, then allowing the system to pretty much fill up. And of course, usually professionals have that, so you'd rather have a professional do it. By all means, take it there. If you have the money, go ahead and do it. But I'm gonna be doing it my way, which is gonna be a little bit cheaper and no more time consuming. So we're just gonna see how it goes and see if everything's good. There's a few more things that we need to replace before we actually go ahead and get started with doing the flush. I need to replace a bleeder that goes in the engine bay area that for some reason they replaced with the pipe. I'm not sure why, I think it just broke and they just bought a pipe because that's all they had at the moment put it in there, we're gonna replace it with the bleeder, that way we can make sure we bleed the system properly. All right guys, so in the previous video, I mentioned that they had replaced this hose right here with like a copper bar, and they placed it in here to try to seal it up because I'm pretty positive that the old breather hose or bleeder hose that was here broke off because it is plastic, just like the thermostat housing, and they just put this in there. You do need that bleeder in order to bleed the system properly of all the air. So right now I'm just removing this, as you can see, I got one part off. I'm just pretty stuck on there, so I use a screwdriver on each end to try to remove it. So I'm gonna keep prying it on the inside to separate it so it can come out, and then we're gonna put the new piece on there. And then here's the new one I got from Amazon. There is metal ones that you can purchase, which I highly recommend, but this one was only like, I think it's 10 bucks. And the other ones are like 40 bucks and not including shipping came out to like another 15 or 20 on top. So I'm not trying to spend 60 bucks on a new bleeder hose. So we're gonna install this one for right now. All right, so there it is installed. It's kind of hard to get that clamp over there, so I just used the ones that were already on there. I'm just gonna fill it up. And I have a funnel that we're gonna be putting on top of it to fill it up with distilled water to clean the system. And then we're gonna end up draining it. So there's that. So right now what I'm doing is I'm filling it with water. Push the news. Can't take all the air bubbles. And I'm gonna check this to make sure it doesn't overheat. Of course, but as long as it's filled up, you shouldn't really have a problem. over there I opened it and the fluid started coming out I 
right guys, so we just added the coolant cleaner and the distilled water into the system. We're gonna go ahead and allow it to run for a few days, that way it can clean out the entire system. The reason I picked up distilled water is because we wanna go ahead and make sure it doesn't have any chemicals that can cause corrosion, rust, gunk in the system. So that's why you don't use regular tap water because that will cause harm to the engine and all the cooling system components. So don't use your hose to be able to clean it. You do wanna use distilled water. The coolant cleaner, I got it from my local auto parts store, which is AutoZone. They sell out things like 10 bucks. Distilled water can be picked up like at Walmart for 99 cents for the full gallon. I picked up about three of them, so I can go ahead and start just filling up the system with distilled water um, as much as possible. And every single time that we go ahead and drain out the system, we're gonna go ahead and add new coolant. Again, let it run for a few days. After we let it run for a few days, wait the next day for it to completely cool off, drain it out, again, fill it up with coolant, and then let it run for a few days, let it cool down again the next day, drain it out. So that's gonna be the process for the entire thing. So let's go ahead and jump forward to the point where I start draining out the fluid after running the car for a few days. Uh, that way you guys can see what it looks like after we take out the coolant for the first time of uh, pretty much flushing it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and begin by draining out the system. Here's the drain plug right under the car. Twist that off. I went ahead and removed the top cover right here for the coolant and I was draining a lot faster now. You can even squeeze the hoses to get a lot more to come out. <coughs> These cars take about three gallons, so it's quite a bit. Can you try pushing this right here? And you hear a lot more come out. I'm pretty sure not everything is going to come out, but we can try to get most of it at least out. I removed this hole so I can go ahead and throw some um, distilled water in there to try to clean out the system. Then more water came out of course. Um, That's not enough because the car takes about 3 gallons. So that pan down there has only about 7 quarts. I actually bought another uh, quart over there or another gallon of coolant. So I want to kind of mix it together. That way there's a like a 50-50 mix. And then I'm gonna add the Nissan fluid in there. I'm just trying to clean out the system as much as possible right now. I'm not doing this to um, use this permanently. I only wanna use this to clean out the system. And then once we're done cleaning the system, then I'm gonna use all Nissan fluid. So that's what I'm trying to do right now is just clean the system up completely. All right, so now we're gonna attach this thing that I picked up from Amazon. So we're gonna attach it right here to the top. Just like that. Then we're gonna attach this thing. And then we're gonna fill this thing up with the fluid, but we're gonna close up the system. And after it mixes again, drain it one more time. That way there's a higher chance of it being more of like a 50-50 mix instead of just being distilled water. Cause right now the system is just filled with um, cooling cleaner and distilled water. I'm gonna begin adding the fluid. And it's gonna continue to go down. And once you stop seeing it go down, then leave it close to the bottom. So just keep watching it go down. And we're gonna turn it on once it fills up, allow it to mix in and then drain it out again. And then finally do our last coolant fill. Looks like it's stopping right there. It helped it stop right there. So it took a gallon. So there's still like two gallons left in the actual system itself. So this is only like, you can say 30 to 40% of what the car actually has. So we do need it to go ahead and mix it, drain it out, and then go ahead and um, add the Nissan coolant in there again. So right here, you guys can see all the gunk that came out. See all those broken pieces right there from the thermostat housing that fell down. All those white spots, that is all from the coolant. So you guys can see it was pretty dirty. 
Had to go ahead and clean it out. Gonna do a few more flushes. And then once we have all the water out of the system and it comes out more of like a greenish blue color, then we should be good. But that's why it's important that you go ahead and clean out your cooling system. Get all this gunk out of the system. I'm gonna remove this as well. Let's go ahead and clean it out. There was a lot of dirt in here that I saw. So taking this off, rinsing it off should be a good idea to clean out the coolant make sure it doesn't get dirty well, it's pretty easy just take off this right here put to the side and then this should pop up but you gotta remove this 10 mil right here and then this will just slide up at an angle Now we just added the entire gallon of coolant into the car that requires you to add water to it. So that's why we added that specific coolant in there. We're going to let it run in the car for a few days just to make sure it runs through the entire system along with the distilled water and the coolant cleaner so it can mix up. Then there's more like a 50-50 mix of everything in there. Now I forgot to mention never open the coolant reservoir or the cap when the car is hot. If you do it, it will shoot out at you and it will burn you. So never do that. Always wait until the car is completely cold then go ahead and remove the cap that thing will burn you and it'll leave marks on you and you're not gonna have a good day <laughs> so let's go ahead and run the car again then once we run it then i'll go ahead and show you how the coolant looks like after we take it out so let's jump to that point all right so here is the fluid you can see that there's a lot of dirt in there again you can see the spots right there and now we're gonna add the Nissan fluid, which is this one right here. Going to refill it again. And this time you can see that it's a lot more of a bluish color. So we're gonna fill this up again. Let it run through the system. And then we're gonna drain it one more time and then add the blue fluid again. That way we can make sure that it's all coolant and there's no water left in the system. You guys can see that it's kind of already changing color. So it's already mixing with all the rest of the coolant. And we're gonna put it on high heat. That way it can open up the thermostat. And then we have to let it get to the operating temperature right in the middle. So it was more of a bluish color, now it's more green. And let the car warm up. Alright, so we just drained out the system again, same process, did it all over again, and we have the last gallon of coolant from Nissan, and now it's completely blue. Let me go ahead and show you guys what it actually looks like right now. So here, the car is completely cooled down right now. But there you can see, that's more of a bluish color now. It's no more of that like light green. I'm going to close that up. And then here you can see that it's filled up again. Now it's blue instead of looking clear. And I did notice that it has some type of leak. And I believe it was coming from this hose right here. So I just picked up this piece from Home Depot. I think I might have cleaned it up already. But I could see like some blue spots right here of where it was dripping from. And I thought it was coming from the bottom. But... Right here you can see that it's like just trickling down and then it went down there so i thought it was either coming from the cap or this right here but once i added that i haven't seen any more coolant coming out so it doesn't ensure you add something on here that way it doesn't drip out this goes strictly to the coolant reservoir and uh, this is just like an overfill so if there's too much coolant in the system it's going to go through there and it's going to go over here but right there you can see where it was kind of going down and i checked down there i didn't really see anything but I did remove this um, pulley right here for the water pump. 
and I just used a 10 mil, removed these, took the plate off, checked those down there, those bolts, I believe they are um, 12 mils or 14, and I just checked to make sure they're tightened up. The bottom two were a little loose. I was able to turn it slightly to tighten up a little bit more, and I haven't seen the issue anymore. So if you can, just check that, make sure it's completely tightened down, um, it's not loose or anything to cause any leaks. But it's been running good for a few days now, everything is good. Uh, it hasn't overheated not even once you can pick up that reservoir that i used here from amazon i'll link it down below if you guys are interested um it does help out a lot essentially what it's doing is with the reservoir being up here and it being filled with coolant at the top that's allowing the bulbs to escape at its highest point which is right here and you want to monitor it to make sure it all goes through um while the car is warming up you can press the um, accelerator or the gas pedal to uh, move all of the coolant through the system and you'll see the bubbles start like popping up so just leave it on for i would say a few uh minutes i would say 10 minutes for the car to warm up and then you can feel by touching the hoses it getting warm and it opening up the, the thermostat in order for it to allow the system or the coolant to go in there so that's what you can do i would recommend loosening that clamp down there that way everything can escape from the radiator because i noticed that as soon as i opened that more coolant actually came out and also the gunk that was stuck in there was getting released if you remember from the beginning of the video um the coolant was coming out really slow because all that gunk was stuck in there not allowing it to release all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and end the video right there hopefully you found it useful for those of you that are interested in doing this i've been running the car for a few days now i think it's been well over a week no overheating we even went on the highway i was going like 80 miles per hour uh, trying to run anything through the system no issues at all it ran perfectly fine so if you guys are interested in doing this there is easier ways like i said of doing it where you can get like an actual tool that's a lot easier and i guess it could be better because it does make sure that all the air is sucked out of the system along with the coolant and then it can add new coolant in there and it's going to fill it up to the top with no issues at all but it's completely up to you if you guys have the money to go ahead and purchase like a more expensive tool that allows you to do that I would go ahead and do it but this worked very well for me did it have any issues and it's been well over a week and i've been driving it a lot throughout the day i thank you guys so much for watching make sure to follow me on instagram that's where i post a lot of my pictures and stuff that's going on with the cars before i post it on youtube but thank you guys so much for watching i make sure to like subscribe hit that bell notification and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace